Hello again, everyone. This is the seventh and last segment of the on-site non-potable water systems rulemaking presentation. This portion of the presentation will cover part six, compliance and enforcement, and part nine, fees. So we'll start with part six. It has only these three sections, section 600, 605, and 610, modification, suspension, and revocation of permits, notices of violation, enforcement actions and penalties, and then of course appeals and adjudicated proceedings. All right, so here it's important to note that non-compliance can prompt department action. The department may immediately revoke or suspend an operating permit if there's an immediate or unacceptable risk to public health. They may initiate enforcement actions regardless of any prior approvals issued, they may also attempt to bring the system into compliance by holding a conference between the department and the owner to explore facts and resolve problems. They may issue an extension of compliance if one is requested by the purveyor, which would include a compliance schedule to help the system come back into compliance. The department may also issue a notice of violation. So purveyors do have a right to an adjudicative proceeding to contest the department's decision which is an important feature. I do ask that you look over this section to see the specifics in part six and the three sections that are contained within it and provide any comments or suggested edits to us by the close of the informal comment period. And lastly, we'll cover part nine, fees. Right here, you'll note there's only one section, section 990. And I will note that DOH typically puts fees in section 990 so that if additional sections need to be added over time, the fee section will remain at the end of the chapter and not need to be renumbered if the chapter is revised in the future. So that's why we have skipped over part seven and eight and jumped to part nine for fees. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot to say here at the moment, but we have in the draft rule right now is that the department may charge fees for the review of documents as well as permit fees to support implementation of an ONWS permitting program. We're still working on the fee section though and you'll see that when you review the draft. The $102 is a placeholder as it is the current fee for reclaimed water permits which is the closest thing we have to ONWS at DOH but it is not appropriate for a couple of reasons. First being that the reclaimed water fee is itself out of date. I think it was last updated in 2010. But more importantly, ONWS treating non-potable water for reuse is not reclaimed water, which has a very specific definition in statute that does not apply to ONWS and the treated non-potable water that gets generated from an ONWS system. So we are still working on the best way to determine and establish Department of Health fees for this rule. I will continue this work during the informal comment period and hope to have some figures to provide soon. In the meantime, I do hope you will review and comment on what is in the rule at this point, including for local health jurisdictions. If you see concern with any references to local fee authority or any other issues you think we should be aware of as we work more on the fees section in this rule, please do let us know. We really are looking forward to hearing back from you on this section in particular to make sure we're providing the proper authority and parameters for local health jurisdictions that may choose to implement a program via a JPR with the Department of Health. So this concludes the seventh and last segment of this ONWS presentation. I sure do hope this format was helpful in your review of the draft ONWS rule language. I do suspect, however, that you will have further questions or need further clarifications. If so, you're in luck. We'll be hosting a few virtual Q&A sessions in February where you can ask questions and get answers from staff that will help you provide comments to improve the draft rule. Look for the registration links to the virtual Q&A sessions on the ONWS rulemaking webpage. Hope to see you at an upcoming Q&A session. If you have any questions in the meantime, I'm happy to answer them. Please reach out to me via email or phone. My email is Jocelyn, J-O-C-E-L-Y-N dot Jones, J-O-N-E-S, at D-O-H dot W-A dot G-O-V. My telephone number is 
2030. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and listen to this presentation. Again, I hope the information is useful and I do look forward to hearing back from you all in the form of comments or attendance at a forthcoming Q&A. Please stay tuned. Bye-bye. And as always, to request this document in another format, please call 1-805-525-0127. Deaf or hard of hearing customers, please call 711 for Washington Relay or email civil.rights at doh.wa.gov. Thank you again for your time and attention.